Welcome to Obsession Engineering. My name's Dave and I am addicted to the Isle of Man TT races. I love the speed and the passion and the adrenaline and it gets into my skin and into my bloodstream. I absolutely love it. I'm over here to get my pre-TT fix around the Isle of Man and to see what they've changed around the course. So join me while I show you some of my favourite bits of the TT course and as I drop in and enjoy a little bit of the quiet Max life. For my recce around the Isle of Man, I'm using the mighty Twono. I very nearly bought my 04 ZX10, and then I looked at the weather forecast, and tomorrow when I go home, it's supposed to be raining, and to be honest, I'd rather get this dirty. So this is the one I'm on, and sat on the motorway on the way over, it was sublime, and going around the mountain, I'm sure it will still be brilliant. I will also be getting a few miles in and bedding in my new Shark Race uh, Pro GP helmet, which is FIM homologated, and I will be using that around the TT in a couple of weeks. And I also have some new Knox Handroid gloves, which I'm bedding in. So this is all sort of some of my new kit for the TT races that we have to have, and it's all awesome. So I think it's time to sling my leg over that bike and go and get some laps. The advantage of learning a road racing course is, you can ride it when the roads are open to the public. The downside is, the roads are open to the public, and you actually have to pay attention to the other traffic and speed limits and boring things like that. So sometimes, it's best to press fast forward. With it all sped up, the run down Bray Hill actually looks about the right speed, and before you know it, we're over Rago's Leap and looking for the breaking mark of a quarter bridge. And then it's on to Braddon, and then Union Mills, and Balagheri, and Crosby, and then it's time for our first stop. So this is the run into Greba Castle, which means behind me, back up this way, this is the run from Crosby. And before Crosby is Balagheri, and before Balagheri is Union Mills. Now Balagheri, always referred to as Balascheri, because it's fast and it's probably the most important corner on the circuit because you come through Balagheri and if you can carry another five mile an hour say through Balagheri you carry it for the next sort of mile and a half, two mile all the way through Crosby, over Crosby Jump, down the hill and then down to here. On a 250 on the right day this may actually be the very fastest section of the course sort of in that dip there because you're coming down Crosby Hill and it's downhill you've been flat out on a 250, because you don't shut off for Balagheri, you've been flat out from Union Mills, and this is just so fast, and it's flowing, and you sweep through this little right-hand kink, and then you shut off and you're down a gear for the next little left-hander at Greba Castle. The speed is just immense. On a superbike, we're talking getting close to 180 miles an hour. Uh, on a 250 GP bike, 140-ish, maybe a little bit more absolutely flat on the stop and it's just awesome. This section, this sort of first section of the course between the start line and Balacrane, it's all fast. The tarmac's pretty good condition, it's smooth, it's flowing, it is just immense. And not many talk people talk about this bit, and I love it. So I've just come a little bit down the road, I've gone through Greba Castle, Appledean, Greba Bridge, and we're now into Gorse Lee. This is a really, really, really fast right-hander. On a big bike, it might be flat out if you're really on it, or it's a tiny little roll, but it's just so immensely fast, and it's just sort of funnels you in under the trees, and it's a beautiful section of track. So you come through here, get fairly close into the uh, sort of white line there, and then you run out towards these barriers here which are basically a bit of plyboard. So they're not going to do a lot, but they will at least, you know, give you an indication of where the edge of the track is, if nothing else. So where these rector cell barriers stick out now, this is what would have been a few years ago Joey's bale, uh, because they had to put a bale on that to, you know, keep, him, keep people away from the actual road furniture, and Joey used to get so close to it every lap that they called it Joey's bale. Nowadays, it still sticks out a little bit, and you don't want to be running wide and getting too close to it, but at least there is a bit more protection. It's back on the bike and heading towards Ballacrane. It's traffic lights right, and then Ballaspur, Doran's Bend, Glen Helen section, and up onto Cronkivody Strait. 
So this is the kink at the end of Cronky Voddy Strait, and it doesn't look like much of a corner. But trust me, flat out on a superbike, this is definitely a corner. I'd actually probably go as far as saying that if you had to pick a few hundred metres of the most spectacular tarmac in the world, this might well be it. If you get this right on a big bike, you can do it flat on the stop, in top gear, and you've had a run, ooh, a mile and a half-ish back there to the end of Cronky Voddy Strait, all the way down Cronky Voddy Strait. I'm trying to get between the S and the L of slow in the sign, and that gives me the right line to kink through here. To make it even more exciting, it drops off a little bit down the hill down there, and the camber of the road actually drops off this way. So you come round the corner, and the bike just starts to weave to the side of the track because of the camber, and then it wheelies off the side of the hill, and what you get is the bike sort of skipping on its back wheel down the hill, absolutely flat in sixth gear at 170-ish mile an hour. It is brilliant. If you want to feel truly alive in life, here is the place. Just as the bike's wheeling over the edge, pushing you towards the outside of the track, weaving on one wheel at 170 mile an hour towards a grass bank, this is it. This is life personified. If you could bottle it, it would sell. And this is why I'm addicted to the place. Because you just can't get that feeling anywhere else. Yeah, sure, you can go fast at a short circuit, but you don't get this. This, this is perfection. From my favourite bit of course at the end of Cronky Voddy to probably my least favourite bit of course, and this is the 13th milestone, and it has been unlucky for, unfortunately, quite a few people. So you come through the bottom of Agarra, which I've still to this day never got fast enough because it is so ballsy, and then you go through a really bumpy section of track, and I have hit my nuts into the tank hard that many times, I'm surprised they actually still function, and then you come into here, and the braking area into the 13th is bumpy, and then you have to miss this first apex and try and get the second apex that I'm basically stood on. And the problem is, the camber's very strange and it drops away down the hill and it's bumpy and it goes dark under the trees here as well. You can see all the shadows now. And it's just horrible. It is everything you wouldn't want in a corner and I don't like it. Uh, I mean, I get on with it and I think I do a reasonable job of it, I just don't like it. So I think it's time to move on. My first year at TT I was really nervous about Kurt Michael because it seems very claustrophobic that close to the cottages. And after Kurt Michael we get a nice open run through the Alpine and Bishop's Court section, then nice and slow for Balaf Bridge, and before you know it we're at our next stop. So that there just next to the farm is Balacry Corner, so you come out of Balaf over the jump and you just keep throwing gears at the bike. That is fifth gear, on a 600 it's actually flat on the stop, you don't even roll off. Uh, it's quite wide, it's quite smooth, it's a real fast foot corner, it's brilliant fun. The most important thing about Balacry Corner is then getting yourself prepped for the jump because you need to be straight on the bike and have the bike straight because you have to go straight over the jump and your body wants to be straight on the bike because you spend so long in the air from there over to here-ish that if you're not square on the bike and the bike's at an angle, when you land, of course the bike pitches and weaves and tank slaps. It is exciting, that is saying the very least. After Balakrai we've got Quarry Bend, Sulby Strait and then the very bumpy section between Ginger Hall and Ramsey. Coming out of Ramsey, you've got the newly resurfaced Ramsey hairpin, and then we're up to the gooseneck. That down there is Ramsey and Ramsey Bay, and that's the backdrop to some of my favourite photos from the Isle of Man. And we've done the bit winding through the trees and up uh, Tower Bends and bits, and then we get to the gooseneck, which has been beautifully resurfaced for this year, and so the grip levels here should be absolutely brilliant. It's billiard table smooth, this is going to be really, really good. So for me, the mountain starts here. You get out of the gooseneck, bit of a wheelie past here, that's where I've got my bike parked, and then we're disappearing up the mountain. So we've got, after this, a couple of really, really fast left-handers, then we've got the really fast right-hander at Joey's, and basically everything from here is wide, it's open, and it's flowing. This is a bit more sort of short-circuity, I suppose, over the mountain. 
down the bottom half of the course, the start line all the way to Ramsey, it's sort of enclosed under the trees a lot. There's a lot of reference points and a lot of markers because there's so much furniture at the side of the road. But you come up here and all of a sudden, the sides of the roads are clearing. You don't get so much reference. So the actual lines are, if anything, I suppose more important here if you're going to get a really quick lap. The thing with the mountain is you can see quite a lot of it, but to do it properly, you've got to know exactly where you are because a lot of it looks the same. So now I'm going to put my helmet on and I can go quite quickly from here because we're in the open speed limit area. It is playtime! We're shifting up the mountain now. We've got Joey's, Guthrie's, up the mountain mile. And before you know it, we're at Mountain Box, Stonebreakers, through the veranda, past the bungalow and heading all the way to the top of the hill. And Brandywell. I've always had a little bit of a thing about this corner because when you're coming into it, go back to here, you come in through this right hand kink and then you need to be on this side of the road to then get the line through here. The apex is on the marker cone there that's got the uh, tape on it. Uh, and then you obviously drive off down there towards the 30 second mile. But when you come into it, you can see nothing here. It's just this vast open space and my slight dislike of heights uh, makes me a little bit paranoid up here. So I tend to always be a little bit more cautious than I need to be. Over there is the top of Snaefell Mountain, the highest point on the Isle of Man. And they say from there you can see seven kingdoms. And those kingdoms are England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland, the Isle of Man and the Kingdom of God. We're heading downhill now and the bike feels really fast. So we're going through the 32nd, Windy Corner, the 33rd, Keppelgate and Kate's Cottage, down towards the Craigney Bar, and before you know it, we're back towards Douglas. So now I'm walking down the Nook, and this section of road isn't actually open to the public, uh, because there is a new section of road over there that's bigger and wider and actually you can fit traffic down. So this section, and then into Governors, are the bits that aren't normal public road, which is why I'm walking it, not riding it. So I actually really like the entry into the Nook, because you're funneling in and you're going quite quickly out of Bedstead and then you've got sort of a little bit of break and you just turn into the nook so fast and the track disappears under the trees and sort of it tunnels in and it feels really really quick even though it's not really that fast um, and it's a bit weird because think about it, it it shouldn't be that much fun because it's a bit like the 13th it's a little bit downhill disappearing under the trees into the dark but for some reason I don't like the 13th and I actually love the entry into the nook it's just great fun sort of knee down right in the sort of grass bank with your knee then you run out to the grass bank on the side there and it's just it's just a really good fun bit of track and then we're going to go that way to uh, Governors and we'll have a little bit of a look around there so this is the end of the nook sort of breaking towards the entry to Governors and this is why this isn't normally used road anymore because it's plenty wide enough for one vehicle it is not really wide enough for two vehicles when I started racing here this was still public road and it was tight and it all got a bit messy my first ever lap of the Isle of Man which was uh, with the travelling marshals I was like lead rider behind the travelling marshal I was on a ZX10 in 2007 uh, the travelling marshal was on a VFR 800 and I thought to myself, when we cross the line I have to be right on his tail, otherwise I'll look like some sort of wuss. So I thought, right, I'll peg back onto his back wheel going into here, uh, and I slightly misjudged how tight this was, and by the time I was breaking in a straight line, the travelling marshal was basically sideways, and I was doing an endo and very nearly took the travelling marshal out. Uh, we did all get round the corner, nothing went wrong, but it was one of those moments when you have a little warning uh, that you're not as good as you actually think you are. Um, and then you took down there into Governors and try and regain your ability to not look like a wuss before you cross the start finish line. So this is just into Governors, so we've come round the end of the nook there 
really really tight sort of hairpin there and then it drops away down here and because this section of track isn't used it is not as clean as everywhere else it does get thoroughly swept but it's you know it doesn't have the rubber and the clearing that the normal road gets so you come down here and you can see there's a lot of leaves and a lot of debris down here um, and obviously all the sap off the trees and everything and so even when it's been swept it's always still quite green down here um, and it also doesn't dry out as quickly as everywhere else because it's under the trees and there's no wind so you have to be really really careful that if it's been wet even a couple of days before it's really really greasy through the bottom of here so you can actually sort of you can almost see the layer of green on the tarmac and it doesn't matter how much you send the road sweep around you never really get rid of that um, so it doesn't matter what the grip level is on the rest of the circuit here it's going to be less so we come around here which is nice and tight and then we're firing out towards the exit and then even the exit's not easy because where it sort of crests onto the main road again it goes up a hill but then flattens out really quickly so you're going around the little right hand kink onto the start finish or onto the start of Glen Crutchery Road so you'd really need to get a good drive out of here to get a good lap time but it's so easy to high side out of here because the road just levels off and before you get to it this is greasy so you've got to be trying to go fast here but you can't rush it if that makes sense so even though this section is no longer public road it is of course an iconic bit of the track still and for me you couldn't ever take this bit out because history dictates that we should have governors in the lap of the Isle of Man. If we use the new road it would be considerably quicker because this actually costs quite a lot of time on like the average time for the lap but we need to have this in and it's actually quite good because because it slows you down at the end of the lap and it makes you just calm yourself a little bit and stop charging around especially if you've got a pit stop coming up it does that give you that just little respite in your brain to go calm slow gives you a little bit of moment to think so that's really why it's still in there and even though it's not the most exciting bit of track it is kind of important I've done a few laps of the course now and it's fair to say I've had my fix the cold turkey moments are over and I'm thoroughly enjoying being back but there is something I should have done before I actually rode the course I should have paid the insurance before I even rode, I should have come down here and asked the fairies to keep me safe while I was riding around. Yes, that's right. I believe in fairies. The fairies of the Isle of Man live under Fairy Bridge, and admittedly they are a little camera shy, so I'm not expecting them to pop out and say hello today. But I have to do this every time I come here. I come to the Fairy Bridge and I have a bit of a chat with the fairies, and I ask them to look after me while I'm on the island and you know look after my friends and my team and people like that so yes i've popped down here i've had a bit of a chat with the fairies and therefore i know i'm going to be safe for the rest of the trip so having completed a few laps of the course and i've been down to Belair to do a lap of the southern hundred and if i had a little bit more time i would have stopped off at glen may to look at the waterfalls because they are stunning but instead i've decided to come to peel to eat ice cream because this is the best ice cream in the world partly because it's in Peel. This is Davidson's ice cream. Today I've gone for mango and raspberry and a scoop of rhubarb flavour which is excellent. I've actually had this ice cream before in Douglas and it's still very good but it's just better in Peel. It's especially good if you come down the days that there's ladies volleyball on the beach. I can highly recommend that. Hmm, so time to relax for a little bit and enjoy my treat. So that's my day on the Isle of Man done. I've had my fix of speed and the course is looking in great condition. It's fair to say that if we get weather like this, I will be deep into the TT drug yet again. So thank you for watching and join me again next time for some more motorbike fun.